Good morning Terraria players and welcome to a new modded playthrough. This time we'll be checking out Pinky Mod, A Tale of Gods and Men. This mod has a lot to cover and some very in-depth mechanics and I'll be sure to cover as much as I can wrap my head around. As usual with the premiere of all modded runs, here's a list of every single mod I'm using this run. We're still in Tmod Loader 1.3.5 as this mod is still in the process of being ported. Do note that I'm playing with the subworld configuration option set to on so I can show the subworlds off. If you have any suggestions for mods to add, mods to do a run of, or something to clarify about the mods, be sure to leave any comments down below. Also, do the other stuff the algorithm likes. Can't forget those. Now, let's begin. A new tale of a burger in the land of roses. To start off, as usual I have to make a character to fit the mod, so I made him all pink. His name? Haha, <laughs> Jesse Pinkman. Why not? When I spawned in, a note was added to my inventory. I needed a journal first though to read it, which I would get later. During my exploration of the world to try and find a good place to make my home, I found the first new enemy, a coblin, small wood man. After dying to a vulture, I made some starter box houses, and a new NPC showed up, the Traveler. Not a big white ball in the sky, but a dude. This NPC was my ticket to the new subworlds. I didn't have any unlocked yet, however. After making boreal wood armor, I kept exploring, eventually getting enough money and resources to craft an instavator from Fargo's Mutant and going underground. Not too far down, a granite chest contained a new item, the untrained cell, which dealt with resisting dark damage. No idea what dark damage was just yet. Down further, I found a few new ores. Crystallized sulfur went into batteries from Magitech, which I'll have its own video on when I figure it out. Hey, hey, hey mod developers, you should totally tell me how Magitech works, by the way. <laughs> The next ore was carbonite chunks that went into a few items, most notably carbonium alloys, which was used to make quite a lot of things for early game. After finding a band of regen and an extracted in your underground, I was able to set up magic storage. After exploring some more, I got an archaic shard from an enemy in the desert. Each biome had a type of shard associated with them. Pretty neat. I crafted some carbonium alloys out of copper or tin, lead or iron, and carbonite chunks. With it and some throwing knives, I made the Death's Fan, a melee weapon that could either slash like a normal sword or right click to fire out throwing knives. I was a fan of this weapon, ha 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 ha, punny. After making more carbonium alloy, I made the Hollow Guard armor. It was a starter armor that gave some pretty good buffs to melee as I was doing a melee run. Its set bonus was that it negates a majority of damage under 12. Good starter armor. Next up, I went to the jungle side ocean to grab something important. That something was a singing stone, which was in a small structure at the bottom of the ocean. I crafted the spell sword sparker out of a wand of sparking and a few other things to get ready. It was a sword that fired wand of sparking projectiles. I then decided to venture into the twilight isles. Yeah, that, that, that's normal for these subworlds some, for some reason. I wasn't quite prepared to explore the subworld as every enemy was very strong. I'd go back later, don't worry. Back underground I went and found a new gemstone, Milky Quartz. It went into some magic tech stuff and some other things. In a marble biome, I found Hermes boots and another dark damage resist item, the Brazen Scale. That and the cell from earlier went into a super dark damage defense item later on. I then found a magic mirror and a blizzard in a bottle, as well as gravitation potions, so I was ready to go to the sky. While up there, I found a prepare to die, a small cloud enemy. I was prepared to die. Yeah, thanks, little cloud man. I was fortunately able to find a star fury in the islands I was on, so I was ready now for the Eye of Cthulhu. First boss time, let's do this. <laughs>
Eye of Cthulhu down. From its corpse, it dropped Divine Shards, an important crafting material for ciphering new things. It also dropped a Soul of Embry, another crafting material. I was also immediately attacked by a new Cyborg Eye enemy. Whack. With the Demon Eye I have now obtained, I crafted the Hollow Knight set. It had the same bonus as Hollow Guard armor, but with the added benefit of allowing crits to inflict a defense reducing debuff. The helmet also gave a night vision effect. It also dropped a memory tablet thing, which allowed me to access a new subworld, the Cathedral of the Moon. I'd check it out later, as I had a king to kill. King Slime, that is. slime down. It dropped a sword. Didn't seem as strong as what I had, unfortunately. Afterwards, it was time to explore the Twilight Isles, the first subworld unlocked. I'll play a bit of my exploration here. Enjoy.
This subworld allows you to dig at certain points, so I went underground, finding some nice loot in the Tomb of the Dryad. I then got surprised by a mini boss in the underground and got clapped. When I returned, it was Goblin Army time. Goblin Man time. Spectre Boots. Now on to the next subworld while powering up the Twilight Isles, the Cathedral of the Moon. It was a smaller subworld, more used for plot advancement instead of exploration and loot. I'll roll the footage for a bit. Neat subworld. The medium, the NPC that was there, gave me an item to track boss progression. I guess that was for. No idea what it was used for, but it was cool looking. I then explored the jungle to look for an anchor to the wind. Surprisingly, it didn't take 10 hours like it usually does. Only about 20 minutes or so. Nice. I upgraded the Frostbark boots, then upgraded those into Featherfall boots, a Pinkymon boot upgrade that had a lucky horseshoe in its recipe. It was very fast and negated fall damage. Next up, I take on a mini boss, the Manifestation of Pinky. It was summoned with a sussy pink gel, made from pink gel and divine gems. It dropped a few nice items, the ring of blades, a conjure short sword, and the pendant of the endeavor. The short sword was like an Arcalis, pretty strong. The pendant and ring could be combined to make the decoration of valor, which gave a lot of buffs, like health and endurance. Next up, I had made a new house in between killing Pinky and Now. It was time to take on the Eater of Worlds. After bombing out a small arena, it was time for the Eater.
Eater of Worlds down. When it was summoned, a message said that a mineral mirror shook. I had seen an item called the mineral mirror, but I hadn't crafted it until now. When I crafted it and activated it, Speculin Ore spawned in the desert. I mined a ton and crafted Speculin Bars out of the Ore and Divine Gems. I made the Fost Events, a Beam Sword. I then crafted the Mistbound Wings to round out the episode, a set of Pre-Harmo Wings that were actually very good. I liked them. And with that, we finish out this first episode. As it is the first episode, I'm not really going to talk much about the upgrades. That's for next episode. Make sure to stay tuned for next week, when we suffer and die a lot. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to join my Discord. See you all in the next one. Blade Burger out.